You're now listening to the Garage Guys Fantasy Sports Podcast. It's the Garage Guys. It's week 13. It's NFL season. This week in motorsports. All kinds of other stuff. Welcome. You're here. You've made it. I need. Ah. My knee. Aaron Rodgers. Ah. Shout, out, shout out to Aaron. Shout out to Aaron and you, his arm for making Devontae Adams get a lot of fancy points. Dude, we – I was on the road most of the day. I watched the majority of the beginning of these games. So, guys, you're in for a treat because Drew and I are basically going to recap every game because we decided that there was no way we couldn't skip most of the games. And um, it's also late – so you're getting that late night feel. Um, you know, I got a thermal on under my, my cool Saints jacket. Shout out to them boys, number one NFC. That's right. Taysom's and not the, the Cowboys. Taysom. Dude, I'm coming around to this Taysom kid, man. I'm coming around. I'm loving the, the way, like, southern, you know, Louisiana, Mississippi people say Taysom. Taysom's in there. Now. Taysom. 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 He's a Mormon magician. It's Taysom. I'm pretty sure they call him the Mormon magician. Hey, there's been worse nicknames than that. I mean. For sure. At least you know there's a chance that he could come to your door to tell you the good word. So, at least you know that you always got that. Second um, best witching hour of the year. Yeah, and I'm, I'm more than ready to talk about it. Uh, before we get into everything that went down uh, on Sunday, including a quick segment about motorsports. Like I said, this week of motorsports, Snowball Derby went down. So, we'll briefly – cover that because we have so much to cover in NFL but this show is brought to you by drip drop that's right this is not drip drop this is just a a bottle of water but remember how last week we told the listeners that we were going to possibly do like a giveaway of drip drop this month you remember this remember this talk we had do you the listener yeah probably every week well look guys I wasn't shitting you drip drop look hey I got some right here brand new packaging This is a a variety bag. We're going to be giving this away on Twitter. Uh, So get over to Twitter. It's at GarageGuysFS. I'll have a tweet posted up there. Um, Also, we got a big boy TikTok account now. So if you are uh, a a TikTok user, go follow at GarageGuysFS on TikTok. We're going to have some cool content up there. And we'll probably do some drip stuff there. But um, we'll be getting this up soon again. And so for tonight, I decided that I was sent a bag of – uh, for myself here, some of the, uh, the the hot, but they have hibiscus in here, and hibiscus is one of my favorites. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that up while I tell the listeners about Drip Drop. Is that okay, Drew? Can I do that? You go for it. You're a good multitasker. Right. Drip, Drop, Drip Drop ORS was invented to treat dehydration in the most challenging circumstances. It was invented by doctors, and it's used by athletes, firefighters, military members, the garage guys, the garage fam, and multiple athletes across the universe of the world. Um, so, cheers. yeah. Yeah, yeah cheers sense. to that. I just mixed up my hibiscus. I'm putting the cap on now of I'm this, the this awesome bottle. The ones that, that aren't the spotlight right now, but they're old faithful. You know what I mean? Like they're the right, the cold. That, that's, what, that's what we're giving away. We're giving away the cold packs and the variety pack. Like I said, we're going to be giving this away. And it comes with berry, lemon, orange, and watermelon. You're also going to get one of these bottles as well. So you can show off that drip, show off the Garage Fam uh, love for the drip drop. Use promo code GarageGuys20 at checkout if you want to order your own. I encourage everybody to do it. Look at that beautiful red. Just makes that drip drop logo just bounce. It kind of matches your shirt. It does. A little maroon. And the, and, the, and the bib, you know. You know me. I try to stay with the swag. It's swag, not swag. Oh, sorry. Swag. Swag. Mmm. Tasty. Delicious. I love hibiscus. It's not too sugary, and it just hydrates the shit out of you. I haven't tried it warm, honestly. I haven't either. I've only tried it cold from uh, from your spot before we went to um, Charlotte. So great, yeah, great times. Just try it hot. Maybe that's the difference maker. Okay. Is it on the, is it on the labeling? This is probably bad that I'm asking this. Is it set, say on there that you're supposed to be room temperature water? Hot. It just says hot. I must have hot. missed the memo. It's hot, but I'm drinking it cold. So, what I mean, you can do it both cold? ways. 
What about a song by Mims? This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. Bro, I had that on the iPad, uh, the iPod shuffle, the stick, not the one with the screen back in the day. Yeah. On the bus, like seventh grade. I also I had Laffy Taffy by D4L. I kind of miss the old uh, gadgets, electronics we used to use, like the, the iPod shuffle. Is that right? The yeah, shuffle? iPod shuffle, uh, iPod nano. So many great. We need to do a show one day on just old tech. Now, especially with the Razor coming out, because I think we made a pack like a year and a half ago that we were going to be Razor boys. So we're going to have that to do was that. Great episode. Go download was. that episode. Download the episode. Razor. We talked about the Tesla truck too. Yeah. But yeah. Do that. I miss, shout out to the cold opens. You know what? We need to get back to cold opens now. Playoff seasons here. Obviously, the fantasy football playoffs are starting next week. Um, it's it's cold open season. This is around the time we start getting the fun player post interviews. Like, yeah, yeah, it's time. We're back, guys. We're back. If, if you're still listening since last year, I feel like you, you deserve some drip, some drip drop for sure. Yeah, we're gonna like I said. So the tweet will be up. You do that, and we'll get it all done. And I want to get drip to the masses, so. Just keep dripping and dropping, guys. That's all I gotta say. Rip it and drip it. Um, was that was that all an ad, or was that just us talking and then resorted back to an ad? We're on an episode of Rick and Morty. If that counts as an ad, then that's our longest ad yet because I think we were just talking. Yeah, we need like four boxes of drip drop now. Yep, exclusive. Um, all right, NFL Week Thirteen. Uh, before we do get into that, I just want to say real quick: Snowball Derby happened. Um, Ty Majeski won, and the story of the race was that nobody was wearing a mask in the crowd. It's Florida. What do you expect? <laughs> that, that would be the place that uh, – I mean, what do people think was going to happen, really? Like, so many people were pissed. So yeah. many people. people and there was so much other cool shit. People need to find bigger problems in their lives. They're going to be outraged over something like that. But that's just my take. Yeah, exactly. So, um, cool things about this Ty Majeski one. That's great. Um, our homie Travis Braden finished 13th. That's cool. Chase Elliott was up there, but I don't even think Chase Elliott's finish, uh, was what mattered because Kyle Busch had a top 10 as well. Um, but the cool thing about Elliott is, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but he has shaved a handlebar mustache onto his face. We're talking Pete Chase Elliott right now. Like he is like, I got my nuts now. Like, yeah, he, he doesn't really care too much right now. It's just anything goes, um, anything he's ever thought about, but has kind of had, he's not reserved anymore. He's going for it at all times. Yeah, he's like, I'm a champion now. Suck on this. Here's my handlebar. Lick it. Yeah. I'm proud of him. I'm, I'm so, no longer, that made me so proud. I'm no longer Bill's boy. That's what he's thinking all the time now. No, he's Bill's man. Okay. Chase Elliott's a man now. That dude's got a handlebar mustache. All right. I was like, is this Ryan Blaney? I was like, what are we seeing here? What, yeah. what would you do if you witnessed Chase Elliott walk up? Like, let's say we were at a race and you saw Chase Elliott walk up to, to Bill and say, give me them grown boy pants. <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> give me them grown boy pants, Daddy. <laughs> Diddy. I would, I would probably not want to share that because, like, it's hard enough to, like, fight stereotypes in NASCAR as it is. So, I'd probably just keep it to myself. <laughs> for being you, know, honest. you know where I was trying to get to on that, right? Um, that Righteous Gemstones scene? Yeah, my big boy pants, daddy. <laughs> yeah, dude. Greatest sh- one of the greatest shows. Can't say it's the greatest because Philly, Always Sunny in Philly is the greatest show of all time. But uh, definitely – we should have season two coming somewhat soon. I don't know if it got delayed because of Corona, but uh, – or the, the Rona, excuse me. Yeah, the Rona. You better say it right. Ronus, as as my father says. Ronus. Got the Ronus. Yeah. I've been telling people, like, they're like, sorry, like, you go try to take your kid to see Santa. They're like, sorry, you can't – only one family at a time in Santa's room. It's like you enter this dark room. I'm just like, Merry Coronas. Like, and I just walk out. Like, it sucks. <laughs> Do you remember where we had the first episode with, uh, like, when when the Rona first happened? Our first episode we got on there, we were like, what is this, the cold? Yeah. Yeah, dude, it was so bad. And then we were, like, trying to ask Bob Pachris, like, what do you feel about it? Like, how do you – he's like, I don't know. I don't know. 
In and hindsight, dude, yeah, we probably didn't look too good there, but whatever. Man, that was hilarious. How how funny is it that the episode where, Cor- where Rona invaded America, we had Bob Pockers on to ask him all the hot questions about the Ronas. Yeah, it's uh, at the time we didn't know what to think. Honestly, it's 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 so much funnier now looking back because I mean, obviously, it's, it's a, it was a, a massive thing and still is a massive thing. And yeah, we should have. Yeah. Um, we should have asked him even more like interesting questions now that we know yeah, what do. if i didn't know now what i know then like we would have probably been cursed off the air like we would have been banned by all fox media like, they'd be like those guys can never ever talk to anybody associated with fox ever again right it'd be fun all right that's enough of that it was good times go check out all these episodes they're they're there promise um nfl week 13 you want to just kick this off going through uh, your best bets. Six and one, week 13. Little hand clap to the chef. He's cooking again. Do you ever get out of the kitchen? What's it like to never leave the kitchen? This um, second, no, this is the third heater now. So we had, we've had two heaters, one cold streak throughout the year. This is the third heater. So um, 14 and one, Chase, the last 15 bets. Unbelievable. Your stats are looking better than coronavirus in America right now, dude. Like that's it's hotter than coronavirus. <laughs> you're you're hitting your hot streaks. <laughs> We're gonna get canceled. Oh no. We're gonna get canceled. Um not really. Laugh, though. Yeah. We, we do love take you guys. You listen. We, we we do take the virus seriously. Yes, we wear I wear a bandana. I promise. You wear that everywhere. You're better than me. I could say that. I do. I am I good about wearing it. I've only forgot it once. I know, here we are getting sidetracked. I only forgot it one time and I had to go to Chick-fil-A. So I grabbed something like in my um, compartment in my car and just covered my mask and walked in. Is that allowed? Like, is that, am I bad? No, these, these people are my favorite people. Hold up. I basically was that person for the first time. <laughs> I basically was that person. But what do you do? Like, I didn't want to drive back. Should I have gone in with no mask? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Everybody I mean, had them all. How many people were in there? It was on the sign. There was people, a ton of people. And I was like, I'm going to look like a terrible person no matter what. Whether you should have just put a Ziploc around your head and walked in there. I was waiting for somebody to walk up to me and be like, really? Could you not drive home? I was like, yeah, I am kind of, I am kind of being know. lazy here. That's what I'm saying. Just get a bandana. If, you're, if, you're, if, if you can't figure out the mat, dude, just tie it around your neck. Everywhere you go, just bloop, Done. Yeah. Pull it down, then you look like a cowboy. That's the only time I ever forgot it was going to Chick-fil-A. Well, you're doing good, man. You're doing a lot better than, than everybody at the Snowball Derby. So, congrats to you. <laughs> um, and, uh, what are we talking yeah. about, bets? Yeah, we're talking about bets. So, yeah, your, your bets are tracking. You're, they're trending. They're hot. Big heater. So, the, uh, the first one, Chase, let's use this to talk about the fight. And uh, Tua came back to the starting lineup for the Bengals. It's a fight. Uh, for the Dolphins, I said Bengals. We don't have Joe Burrow anymore, so – I thought this total at 42 and a half is too high, knowing what we know about the way two has been running the offense. It's not Fitzmagic. Right. And this was a winner under, under 42 points. You want to talk about Beautiful. Five? Yeah. So uh, I think like the first deal that happened, I think it was like Xavier and Howard and Tyler Boyd got into a little discrepancy. And then of no. course, Tyler Boyd, like the guy that's like ghosted us pretty much all season, like on the last week for me to like make a playoff push in one of my leagues, I have him in the flex. He gets 14 fantasy points. He's on pace to just go like maybe at least 20, 25 area. Like he could easily get another touchdown in this cause he's gelling and he gets booted out of the damn game. So that stung. So I'm like, well, you know, you take what you can get, you move on. Um, but then the big one, What's up? What was it? Like, I mean, 14 points is probably good enough for season long, right? Yeah, it's decent. But, I mean, it's like I'm also playing Kate and Michelle Mazdick in this Series XM league right now. And, like, they have a very stacked team. And so, yeah. like, right now I'm down, like, eight points. And I have, like, two more players left. And that's just Jarek McKinnon and Logan Thomas. So, Logan Thomas I think they have – Maybe. They have, they have Jared Allen. So, I mean, Josh Allen, sorry, not Jared Allen. We're not talking about Culinary Academy here. I'm thinking about Chef Bets. Look at me. I just um, grip only, but I didn't, so we're good. Yeah, good job. Yeah, I wasn't going to be that, that bad about it. But, yeah, man, it just the Tyler Boyd situation was the first deal. And then it was just like everybody got off the bench. Jakeem Grant was on special teams, got hurt. And so, like, it was literally like old school, like, like hey, man, what would you say? 
Like, what'd you say? And then, like, everybody's like, oh, hell no. Nah. And they just, like, go, you know? Brian Flores, man. I don't know. I think Brian Flores would take out 90% of active players. Dude, would- I think that, like, he should be on the Jake Paul Floyd Mayweather fight card for 2021. Like, I think that he could do some damage in that fight. I knew fight. this topic was going to come up. One of us was going to bring up the Floyd Mayweather. Jake yeah. Paul what do we call him Jake Paul? I never know which one. It's Jake. From, not from State Farm. Uh, the one that knocked out Nate Robinson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, couldn't believe that. But uh, I love when a coach does this, it's like shows the emotion. I know some people will get rubbed the wrong way, thinking it's like uh, too much for a coach to do. I love when the coach does that, personally. Yeah, it, uh, it just shows the fire and the passion, especially with this Miami team that's been in the gutter for so long. Like now we're like, oh, shit, like they're developing into a real contender. And then you got a coach like this. Oh, like, like hell yeah. Like you get fired up about that. So Dude. we saw we saw like uh, Fitzy and Tua saw some uh, Gzeki do his thing. Shout out to tight ends, appreciate. Um, he's made but, some of the most unbelievable catches on the year. Oh yeah, dude he's he's like the he's like the OBJ of tight ends. We'll say if we that. Ever get the volume and consistency with him, he's going to be a force. It's going to be Janu O'Shaughnessy Gzeki. Yes. That's what we got. That's them boys. All right. Yeah. So, other than that, though, that game was really kind of like, eh, it was whatever. Good that the bet hit, though. So, that was one of the first bets. What, what, else, what else do we have after that one? The next one I have on the card here listed, I'm reading my article right now, over on Rotoballer. So, get over there. Uh, Colts Luka Garage. Three versus Texans. Um, Chase, this was one that looked like an easy winner, and then it became very close there at the end. Yeah, um, I was lucky enough to get the Colts defense in a couple of season-long leagues. Um, I may have put the Colts defense in the DFS lineup or two as well. 13 points, uh, not too bad. Uh, they were going sure off we should, a while. Yeah, sure we should have had them Pats, that Pats defense, though. We'll talk a little bit about that later, the black <laughs> hole. Um, but, yeah, this game, dude, was uh, – it was it was tight, man. Like, these AFC South – this AFC South matchup, like, there's a lot at stake uh here because the Colts are like you know trying to get to number one which happened and now you you're I'm sitting here wondering like damn like the Colts have like quietly just kind of like snuck up on me for some reason because like I'm just like always like since Peyton Manning left like I'm just like and Andrew Luck I'm like what is the Colts you know what I mean you're just kind of like Andrew Luck is a thumb bot by the way yeah that's right correct correct that is correct don't ever forget it. Andrew Luck. Hey, the um, resurgence of T.Y. Hilton is really what defined this game for me. That's that's the story, dude. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. I mean, he had 28 DK points, eight receptions, 110 yards, 11 targets, and a touchdown. Where's this who is, been who is him? Who is he? Yeah. 4,300 on DraftKings? What? Dude, if they can get this type of production from him, and he's capable of it, we've seen it for years, and then they know um, – Michael Pittman's kind of come along. This that adds a new element to the Colts. I feel like they're pretty – everyone knows the recipe of the Colts. They're going to play, like, good football. They're going to run the ball. They're going to play good defense. They're not going to, like, crush you with their outside weapons. But if T.Y. Hilton comes back like this, maybe maybe they're a little bit more serious of a contender is what I'm saying. I have a theory on, on why it's happening. Also, too, shout out to all the Jonathan Taylor truthers. You finally had your day. 22.50 fantasy points. So, go ahead and run your little victory lap that you claim to run in week one. Good job. You're still using all three guys by committee. Like, it's so disgusting. It's nasty. It's – why you got to yeah. do this to us, Frank? You know? Just like, at least why? pick two. Like, go Hines and um, definitely get rid of Wilkins, right? Yeah, just Taylor and Hines. That's all you need. Just make it, make it work. Wilkins' name for a while. I was sitting there thinking, like, he's not the – He's not the guy that should be getting touches away from your rookie uh, first round draft pick. Shouldn't be that. Yeah, guy. like, Shouldn't. and why would you, Wilkins just does not sound like a running back name? No, so not at all. Um, but you know, like JJ Watt, like I don't know, he just was so sad. He was so sad, and it's like this is what happens when Bill O'Brien wrecks your team, and then Will Fuller does drugs. So. Good job. <laughs> like, this is what you got. But, I mean, dude, they did, they did decent. But my, my theory on it is, is that this was, uh, this was uh, I guess you'd say, wild life. This is a wildlife battle. 
okay, this is, uh, this is a, a steer and a colt going at it. And the baby horse won. Okay, so they're, on the, they're down on the farm in Texas. You know, they're, they're, the horses are trotting. The bulls are bucking. Do you have to do an animal analogy every single episode? Is that part of the Yes, recap? or this would not be Garage Guys Fantasy Sports <laughs> Podcast. Yes, that is correct. Um, so, yeah, there's birds, and then there's, wild, there's uh, there, I guess you would call it wildlife, or you just call it life on the farm. So, life on the farm. And plus, Phillip Rivers is, like, leading the horses. It just makes so much sense. Bolo tie Phillip Rivers uh, being on a team – about horses. He may appear in the next season of Yellowstone for all we know. Child to Phillip Rivers. I need that next season of Yellowstone, by the way. I need it in my veins. I need like I need air to breathe. Are we on game two? I got to move us along here. And I can't believe I did this, but it just felt right. Um, one of our favorites of all time, one of our favorite coaches of all time, Mr. Adam Gase. Okay. So we're, mo- we're moving forward. Adam Gase, Adam Geis, if he's a guy. Big salt guy. Um, This is obviously probably one of my favorite bets of all time that you've done because when I saw you took the Jets points, I was like, Chef has lost his mind. Like something. Yeah, it did. And but then I got to thinking, like, I've been big on Derek all week. And I'm like, ever since I saw Josh Jacobs said, I'm like, okay, bounce back for Derek Carr and these Raiders. Like it's it's perfect. It's it's pristine. It's set up. And so I was thinking about it that way. Then I see you're taking points, and I'm like, well, I got to ride with Chef. I'm like, I'm not just not going to ride with Chef Boy. And then I'm like, well, this can only help me now because if this is the case and the Jets are up and they're winning, then Derek Carr is going to play his ass off, and he did. Derek Sports Carr came to play today. He was rooming fast down the lanes with his, uh, his Darren Waller uh, four-wheel drive. Dude, shout out to Darren Waller. Dude, the suspense of this game was killing me because uh, all the stuff on Twitter was about the fact that everyone was talking about the, the number one draft pick. So you had this game oh, going yeah. on. Jags and <laughs> Jets. Yeah, Jags, Vikings. And both games were just back and forth, back and forth. And yeah. um, I don't know if you noticed this. Blew my mind. As much as Waller went off and Derek Carr went off for fantasy points, they probably – I think there was four or five deep balls that Derek Carr missed Nelson Aguilar on. Yeah, the and Darren Waller had, I'm pretty sure, a, a touchdown that um, Derek Carr didn't even like see in the end zone wide open. So like they could have had it, 45 fantasy points each. Yeah, and I mean Darren Waller had 48. Okay, so I mean, dude, 200 yards, two touchdowns, <laughs> and then you got Derek Carr over here at 35 fantasy points on DK with three touchdowns. He had the one interception, 28 to 47, dude. Like, and then we had some Henry Ruggs action. We had some uh, – who else did we have? We had uh, Renfro. Renfro had some action. There's just – everybody had some action. Your Jameson Crowder on the Jets. If you get, a, if like, a screenshot or a picture of that last deep ball where they won the game on the Hail Mary, like yeah. that defines New York Jet football for the past decade. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, just like – that play. Just endure the suffering. <laughs> yeah. Straight up. I almost wore a Jets hoodie today, but it was it was Falcons week. There was no way in hell I could do that on, on game day. If you're a Jets fan, you're probably standing up clapping this one, this one time, right? You're probably excited. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence! It's like, do not ruin that kid's life. Like, don't do that to him. Please, God. I know we're getting way too into this game, but I can't help it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. I've got to ask you this. If you are an NFL owner or GM, probably a GM, not an owner, are you, are you giving Sam Darnold a chance, another chance? Because I, I think he still has potential, personally. I think he's just on the Jets. You want to know my real opinion? Yeah, I would trade for him. I'm selling the team. I'm just, I'm selling it. Like, I'm done with it. Like, I'm scrapping it. Like, let some, like, no, startup kid thing. from Brooklyn. No, thing. I'm saying, like, if you, I'm assuming, all right, you're the GM of another team, and you know okay. the Jets are going to get Trevor Lawrence. I, I think – I would be in to give Sam Darnold another chance. I think the Jets are ruining him. Yeah, absolutely. I thought you were saying if I'm the owner of the Jets, like, for one, like, whoa, would never make that investment. Two, you know, like, you know, just get rid of it. Be done. But, you know, let Gary Vee buy it. He wants to buy it so bad. Like, let him buy it. I was about to say Gary Vee wants to buy the Jets, and he'll probably be great if he ever gets the opportunity. I guarantee in our lifetime we will see Gary Vee on the Jets. Guaranteed. Sure. If he's not a the the you know majority owner, he'll be a minority owner. 
Exactly. Um, but yeah, I would definitely give Sam Darnold another chance. I mean, there's a lot of teams that are going to probably be looking for quarterbacks. I mean, I know the, the Bears are in the running. Uh, the 49ers may be looking. Um, who else we got? That's just two off the top of the dome right there. Um, there's, a, there's a few more. The Colts. The Colts. I think Colts and um, Colts, Saints, and Bucks all potentially be looking for a QB. Yeah, Bucks. I don't know with the Saints, though, man. I mean, we'll talk a little bit about that game. I don't want to get too hung up. No more Drew Brees conversations. No more of that. Like, we, we're going to get in and get out of that. I love them too much. I'm going to try. Ready but, this yeah, yeah, dude. The, but, yeah, shout out to the Raiders. Shout out to the Raiders. Raiders. Let's go into this one, uh, Chase, because it's the next bet. I had a, a Falcons and under 53 teaser. So, basically a teaser for people that don't know. It's moving the spread or the total um one direction so i you have to win both parts of the bet so i took the falcons plus 10 and under 53 total points so this hit uh saints kind of dominated the first three quarters in my opinion they weren't scoring a ton of points but just like time of possession defense was dominating the defense is definitely top five if not top three Uh, absolutely as good as taste has been chase i feel like this team is just their defense is the staple and um, felt, felt pretty good about this bet. I didn't feel like the Falcons would win the game, so that's why I used the teaser. Yeah, okay, well, then that's okay because, like, I saw that. I just – anytime – I'm glad it hit, but I, I didn't take that bet. I didn't take it. I wasn't, I wasn't, like, just because, like, a, a bet's a good bet doesn't mean – I know, I know, but I just – I cannot put my pride to just say Falcons <laughs> point. I, they, I can't. I can't do it. I can't can't do it. I'm sorry. I skipped that bet. Um, so did you put all my all my plays in like that app, except for one. Yes. <laughs> it just shows you how much you hate the Falcons. Yes, 100. percent um, I'm proud of Taysom. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. He spread the ball around some. Jared Cook got a touchdown. Was really hype about that. That was cool to see. Um, you know, he's uh he's he's starting to to get that the presence in the pocket a little bit. Like I'm I'm digging it. So. I've been heavy on Jameis. I'm backing up a little bit. I'm going to say, you know what? Like, maybe all this guy needed was to get into the actual soil, get some watering, and then let's watch him Let's watch him bloom. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I've been kind of critical of him in the past. And, and, you know, I think the jury's still out. But today I saw more from him than I have previously that makes me a little bit more encouraged and with their direction. I mean, I still think they had a few drives where they stalled out where he could have, he could have done a little bit more in the passing game, but overall his efficiency was incredible. I mean, he had a, he had a Drew Brees type first half. I know that for sure. Like everybody was touching the ball, high completion rate. I want to say he was like 75% of his passes were completed. So yeah, man. I mean, he got Michael Thomas, 22 fantasy points today. Um, you know, obviously Taysom is going to probably be your number one fantasy scorer on the saints now. That's just kind of like how he rolls. I mean, he's going to run one in, get one here and there. So you've just got to adjust it. Like the Saints were once a very broad spectrum fantasy team. They're not now. They're a little more, you know, inclusive. And so it is what it is. I don't care. We're winning. We're winning. Yeah. I mean, ain't fantasy scoring is designed to reward those rushing yards. So it's not like Alvin Kamara or Michael Thomas are, you know, inferior to the to Taysom. It's just more of – No. It's game plan. If you can how do we win? If you can get a QB that – that's just like the definition of what you want in fantasy sports. It's a QB that can run. So. Yeah. It's my favorite. I enjoy it. So, I like Jameis, but uh, we're here now. So, I want to encourage all the fantasy players in the state of Louisiana that can't bet, can't play DFS legally, um, move to Mississippi and just start betting instead of playing fantasy and just bet on the Saints now because you'll be better off unless you have Taysom Hill. So – just want to throw that out I there have, all the – Who that news. Tell. Do tell. I'm worried, Chase. About I'm what? I'm worried about you Saints fans because I think I know what's going to happen to you guys. Stop. Shut up. Mm-mm. Not after today. Not after today. Not today. You're gonna win. Don't. You're going to dominate. You're going to get the bye, and you're going you're gonna to lose in the second round. Shut up. <laughs> to who? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's going to happen in the Superdome. Just like the the curse is going to continue, probably. With I'm, about, I'm about I'm about to end this call. Okay, we need to go to the next game. We can go to the next game. Yeah, you better. You better. Don't it's you going, stop? I swear to God, well. dude. I swear to God. If, well. if the Vikings get in the play, 
<laughs> God, dude, I will end this shit. Like, oh man. Happen. But, but you know. I'm right, next game. Read. Next game. Yeah, next we're game. about to get we're about to get hooked in. You you okay, trying to you're trying um, to get me? I don't think this was on the. No, it's not. This is not on the bets. But I wanted to definitely talk about the Lions Bears because we don't. Just <laughs> Yo, the circus show. Yeah, I, we don't. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. <laughs> Nagy no, is fucked. I just had to say this right now. Okay. I looked at the score and it was thirty to twenty, and Trubisky had had a good game, and everything kind of seemed like it was heading the right direction. The Bears had been on a terrible skid; like they had needed a win so bad. And then all of a sudden, I like hit refresh on my sports app. I'm watching on Red Zone, but for some reason, it it I, I kind of was looking away during the um, the Lions and, and Bears game because I thought it was over. I yeah. refreshed it. Or I refreshed Twitter, and it was just like. Somebody said, oh, no, not again. And it was, oh, no, not again. <laughs> and it was a picture of Matt Nagy just on the sideline. So, yeah, he was so mad. You know, I kind of – for these moments, I kind of hate the mask because I wanted to see Matt Nagy's face. Yeah, you can't really tell. I mean, it still, it still was there, but it wasn't the same. Right. No, it's just uh, – it's, it's always hilarious – um, when these types of things happen in Chicago, because it's like, I feel bad for Chuck Pagano. I do, man. I just, I just got, I got this weird thing for Chuck Pagano and he's just there running this defense and you're just kind of like, what the fuck Chuck? You know, <laughs> like, why couldn't you fix this? Like what, like what, like what is happening? Like one week you think like, like you go into the season, you're like, Oh, now he's got it together. This is going to be a hybrid offense. He's from that tree. He knows how to get it around. It's like, no dude, like you screwed up, but like shout out to David Montgomery though. He did decent. Like he's offense looked better today. It's like when the offense looks better, which is rare. It's usually the defense carrying the team, but. Yeah, I guess we we can't we can't not talk about the like Matthew Stafford. Um, like I, I was telling you, like when I looked up, I was eating and I looked up and I just saw Matt Stafford getting ready to do a post game uh, like presser or whatever, and I'm like, this doesn't happen often. I'm like, and they just won a game against the Bears in their division. What's different this week? Oh, yeah. They don't have lead poisoning anymore. There's no more pencils and ears. Uh, Hot Topic Patricia took a hike. And then some guy named, uh, what was it, Cyrus? His last name is Cyrus. He's like a wide receiver for the Lions, I think. Oh, or so, What a name. Touchdown for that guy. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Marvin Jones had a decent day. Dude, Marvin Jones hey, was – he hey, was hey, right hey, there, dude. He twice, didn't he? What is life? Who? Adrian Peterson scored twice. What is life? Yeah, old AP. It's wild, dude. Like, th- dude, this week was nuts. It was. When it comes to getting towards those later windows, like the witching hour area moving forward. But, yeah, that's always funny. It's good to see the Lions on top. Good to see Matt Stafford in a postgame presser. Chase, I was happy. I'm pretty sure the streak continues for the week after you fire your head coach, you win. Yes, that's, that's law. So and if I'm, you're – I think it's happened four times already this year, and all four of them wins. Adam who Gase thought lost? he was going to break that today, but he didn't. Who all have we lost? But we lost uh, Butchin. We lost. Yeah, Bill O'Brien. We lost a uh, hot uh, Patricia. Hot topic Patricia. And we lost someone else. Dan Quinn. We lost Dan Quinn. Anyone else? Mm-hmm. I think we're three and zero on the revenge. Like after the game, I think after that's the all. Fire. Yeah. I thought there was a four, but maybe it's just three and zero, not four and zero. Not sure. Not sure. Um, if somebody yeah. else has been fired, comment. Let us know yeah. at Garage Guys FS anywhere. Just tell us. Just say, hey, I listen, and this guy got fired too because that's we, we love you and we need you, the listener here. You're listening to us. You're a Garage fan. We love you. Um, but yeah, so that's 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 out the way now. The Lions maybe still have a fighting chance at life. Uh, so we'll see what happens. No more hot topic close. Um, do we yeah, want to talk after, Jags, Vikings? Briefly. I mean, uh, shout out to James O'Shaughnessy, as always. Uh, Kirk Cousins tried to Kirk Cousins from 2018 Kirk Cousins, but instead he actually won. So, Yeah, that game was looking woof, dude. If, like, a hit him. 
hit them with that flex, they're going to be begging for some more. Yeah. How do you that run flex? Sorry. Oh, get it out. Get out of your system. If you're not watching on YouTube, you didn't see any of that. So just take some time to do that later today if you're listening on podcasts. Yeah, I um, always wonder what people think when we say something like that and, and there's no context. Like you have the context if you're watching, but. Yeah, just get, get over to YouTube and, and subscribe and like. Do that because we love you. Um, but yeah, dude, I don't really know. There wasn't really much to it. I mean, Beaker was Beaker dropped like one dime. I think like he was, he had a bullet dude to like Chenault. Um, hot seat for them. Like, I mean, dude, they almost had that game in the bag. Like, I feel like that was like Doug Marone's, like, they, that would have been his like last hope. Like if he would have won that game, like they'd have been like four more years, Doug Marone, we beat the Vikings. Yeah. I just can't get over the drama for the number one pick today. I just can't get, I know I've already talked about it once. It was like a storyline on the 200th episode of red zone. Like we got all this awesome footage of like old school stuff, Marcus Colson getting the first touchdown. And then the storyline of the jets and the Jags trying to fight to lose, but actually win. It was a beautiful thing. And the Vikings were in, um, I think two of my bets or one. Let's see. Yes. Yes. They were in the Packers, Dolphins, Vikings, money line parlay. So that hit. That was the big boy chase. That was the risk two units on that one. Can I tell you a secret? Let's hear it. A risk 2.8. <laughs> Don't ask where the point eight come from. I just did it. You didn't read in, in, in bold on the uh, intro to my article every week where I say following the unit count is very important. And you just Yeah, I, I broke bad. that rule. You're, you're a bad boy. Shame, 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 yeah, shame. <laughs> oh well, well I'll have to you have to forgive me next week with my with my uh, with my, my my badass new record over was on that, that app. Hmm. Was that a game at the range reference? The shame. Duh, bro. <laughs> shame, shame. <laughs> yeah, that was a an epic episode. Wasn't that like a ten minute scene? Just like shamed uh, Cersei, like all the way. To the he did use a body double. Interesting fact. Yeah, yeah. No, no real Cersei nipple, guaranteed. <laughs> Just character. Um, uh, other than all that stuff, though, with the uh, the the parlay, the bets were amazing. We did that. We just didn't hit one. It's okay. Six and one. It's a beautiful thing. Um, we need to talk about this Titans Browns game. This is something big. There's something happening. Okay. I know I've made my jokes about uh, Wall Street Stefanski, okay? Because let's, let's be real. Like, the dude just was – he was a suit. I was like, this is not a football guy. There's no way – okay, I figured it out. All right, they're using heavy anal- analytics, trading options, and coaching football at the same time. All right, we are literally – we're looking – we're looking at a guy that puts packages together and also incorporates, like uh, – I don't even know Roth like IRAs like all together in one. Okay, like we, like there's something big brewing. How does this defense make Derrick Henry, Tractor Cedo, the the man himself? How does he make them fumble? How does Baker Mayfield throw four touchdowns before halftime? What happened in Nashville? I'm 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 speechless on this. Honestly, it was insane. This was one of the toughest games to call, and that's why I didn't I didn't have a play for this game on the betting card. And I just didn't know how I felt about it. I thought Cleveland kind of matched up well with with Tennessee. So uh they did and more. That that halftime score was just ridiculous, man. It was like what was the score? Thirty one to seven at halftime. It was thirty one it was thirty one to seven at halftime. They come back in uh and they just continued to wreck. I think what was the final score? Like forty it was like 41 to 20. I mean, Ryan Tannehill came back. I mean, like, he fought, dude. Like, I mean, he had a good fantasy day. Dude, I started whole, him. The whole no – sorry to cut you off. I, I just had a thought. And the no Odell thing is is so real. Like, they're just better without him. At first, yeah. I kind of was like, you know, it can't be that. But Jarvis Landry for sure plays better without Odell. Yeah, like, not to mention Donovan Peoples-Jones. The Peoples-Jones. Okay, 17 fantasy points for the People's Jones today. One of, one of the garage guy's favorite names. Shout out to my rookie boy in my dynasty league. Higgins, right. too, man. He's like the reliable guy now that, um, you know, now that Landry's the, 
number one, obviously. Uh, Higgins mm-hmm. is like that reliable number two, and then People Jones is like the, the deep threat. Yeah, well, I think Higgins and Baker are actually like best friends. Like they, they, they commentators were talking about how like he lived at his house for like ever. Like they're just like inseparable. So this is like like I want to see Step Brothers memes with Baker and Higgins now. And isn't it weird? There's two Higgins in Ohio. Bengals have a Higgins. Are they related? That's a little too much. Too too yeah. many. A lot of Higgins. T. Higgins. Rashad Higgins. Both of them are good. Yeah, it them appears. Higgins. Them Higgins, man. Higgins, man. <laughs> them Higgins boys. Higgins boys. Higgins mans. Higgins Higgins uh, hustlers. Higgins hustlers. We got to stop know. it like that. What do we call that? Like our uh, righteous gemstones mixed with um, Jacob Snail stuff. Yeah. Hey. People that listen to us. It's the me, time, Jacob Snail. Like, what are they talking about? I'd like to talk to you today about T. Higgins and Rashad Higgins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, dude. Wow. That's another great show. Right, Ozark, bring it back. Browns. All right. So, Do you the Browns. I, 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 can you trust the Browns? Does the Browns you, trust the Browns? I don't trust the Browns. Oh, yeah. They, they're very cocky. Do you trust uh, – Baker's cocky. Do you trust uh, – David? well, David Njoku too maybe. Did you see him like jump over a man today? Yeah. So, he straight up jumped funny. over a man. He's like, screw you. I'm a man. Watch. See, like, when a guy is, is as – let me rephrase that. When someone is that athletic, how is he not a better tight end? I don't know. My mind. Like he, he has like everything it takes to be a, a tight end to me that like would be a difference maker. Maybe I guess maybe, he just has this nagging injury issue. Maybe that's really all it is. And go somewhere else, but he's not going to get the time or the role there with Cooper. Mm-mm, not at all. Um, but I, I just want to, I just want to end with this. Okay. It's 19, 1980s. Um, Baker Mayfield walks in the room. It's wall street Stefanski. All right. He says, look, man, he's got a proposition for you. We're going to make a lot of money. You're just going to do what I say, and you're just, we're going to trick everybody, but we're going to do it low-key so that, like, we don't, we're off the radar. And Baker's just like, all right, yeah, bet, big bet, yeah. And then, like, here's Baker today finally cashing in his Roth IRA and just rolling in it, and the whole entire team gets a share Offensive linemen get uh, four like side by sides like like Honda mules and stuff like what Zeke tried to do for the boys back in the day, but now he can't afford that because he can't afford to get a touchdown half the time. And yeah, the Browns, dude, you can't even say the Browns browned. What did the Browns do today? The Browns cashed in. Yeah, it was an unbelievable game for the Browns, man. I, I know that I kind of was a hater last year before the season started, but. Uh, I mean, they're going to make the playoffs, I think. They're going to get a wild card spot unless they just have a meltdown. Yeah. How far do they go, though? That's the question. I don't trust them to win a playoff game. Do you? I don't know, man. I think like, It's 2020. I'll say this. When Baker's good, he's, he's good. If Baker could play like this every week, like, dude, they'd be a Super Bowl contender. He's probably, like, the closest thing we've seen to, uh, like, Jake, Jay Cutler in consistency. When he's good, mm-hmm. he's good. But when he's bad, he's bad. He's bad. He's smoke, smoking, smoking bake, baked, baked baker. <laughs> he's, he's out. Big leaf. Big cheek, big leaf. Yeah. But, no, it's going to be nuts. Like, the, the AFC North is, uh, is why. I mean, the Steelers are obviously, like, they're, they're rock and rolling. I ain't no worries with that. But, like, yeah, like, that hunt right there. I mean, the Bengals are out. So, I mean, it's really the Ravens or the Browns. Like, who's it going to be? You know? That whole picture, playoff picture, is just ridiculous. So it's wild news. All right, um, two more games that I definitely want to cover before we head out. Uh, these are the black hole games. This is where you're going to do most of the talking, and I'm going to do more reacting because I did not watch afternoon games. However, I'm so mad that I did not get to watch the afternoon games because there was big events that happened in all three of them. Uh, that, that I that I didn't get to watch. And this is not including the Sunday night football game, the Denver and Kansas City. But um, Colt McCoy beat the Seattle Seahawks in, two, in the year of our Lord, 2020, um, <laughs> with the New York Giants, <laughs> with the New York football Giants. Um, 
the Rams Arizona game was wild. We predicted Jared Goff to do well. Josh Reynolds not so hot, but Dan Arnold, twenty fantasy points, big tight end Arizona day, big excite for uh, <laughs> new new long haired mullet man Dan Arnold, and then we have the Los Angeles Chargers absolutely obliterated by Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. Start us off. Do we want to talk about any of these in particular, or do you want me to just go? Just just take me into this black hole of afternoon football. As good – I'll say this. As good as the early slate was, probably the second best slate of the year, um, the afternoon was very bad. Like, the games were not very entertaining. Uh, the Rams were like – I think Cam Akers scored twice. Yeah, fantasy football Twitter was so hype for Cam Akers. Yeah, like the, the, the game – There's my guy. There's my guy. I called him. Yeah, Look at these uh, yards. <laughs> like, <laughs> makes me want to puke because Jared Goff like, didn't have any uh, touchdown passes, I don't think. Maybe one. I don't know. I just stopped looking. okay, though. I stopped looking at his stats. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you this, the black hole. Russell Wilson, I don't know what happened to him. I don't know what happened to this offense. But that's the kind of game that makes people think sports betting is rigged. That game with Colt McCoy and, like, DK Matt. Like, you're telling me Metcalf and Tyler Lockett couldn't get open more? Dude, you know what I mean? If anybody says that they saw this coming, they are a fucking liar. And I want you to out them to me so that I can find them and tell them that they are a fucking liar. There's nobody in the history of, of the world that would have told you that on this day, Colt McCoy and the New York Giants would beat the Seattle Seahawks with DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Chris Carson. Shout out to Chris, by the way. He got over 20 fantasy points. So shout out to Chris. He was on our DFS show, preview show. So that was good. But dude, Be sure to watch the preview show every week if you're not. Yeah, exactly. Go back and watch it and see all the funny stuff that we said and then go laugh at us for the ones we got wrong and then give us a hand clap for the ones we got right. Do it right now. Run of our YouTube. Um, but, yeah, dude, like it, I didn't watch any of it. Like I said, I just saw this headline, like Colt McCoy and the New York football Giants take on the Seattle Seahawks and beat them. I'm, I'm like, what? You're number one in the NFC East now. Congratulations. I, I couldn't believe it, and I could not believe it. And the Seahawks' defense played well. They had uh, some sacks. I'm pretty sure they turned over Colt McCoy. I don't know if there was a safety in there. There might have been a safety. I think there was. Somebody okay, so, so how long has Colt McCoy actually been holding back? You're the backup QB man. He he's has even, been, he's he a weapon. himself today. He just goes out there and tries to not make mistakes. That's what you love about backup quarterbacks, Chase. He just goes, just goes in there, doesn't make mistakes, just checks it down to the running back, you know. State free football. Okay. Even though they had turnovers. So I just lied. <laughs> <laughs> try your best, Colt. Just try your I best. I just love I love backup QBs. Props to Colt McCoy. Um, but I don't really have much to there wasn't production in this game, Chase. I don't really have like a lot to to say. But I did want to get your thoughts on the Patriots defense. Just I mean, when you checked your app, did you expect to see the standout rookie, Mr. Justin? Herbert, a bear, Herbert season. No, dude, I did not expect this at all. This is another one. If anybody would have told you today that the New England Patriots would be 45 points up on a scoreless Los Angeles Chargers, I would tell you they were liars. These two games came from another universe through a black wormhole and landed in our universe today. There's no way that, that anybody predicted this. Because even as bad as Anthony Lynn has been and is and deserves to be fired, and I don't care what anybody says, him and, him and Tarod can both ride out on a bobsled uh, or on a lightning bolt uh, coming out of their ass to some other city. I don't give a shit. This is horrible. You cannot tell me that you have a team with Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, and you can't score a fucking point? What is wrong with you? I'm sorry. That shit pisses me off, dude. The Patriots have been – They're coming. <laughs> this, Bill's just like huh, – huh, huh. been back. I think that's his third week. They've Their defense just looks back to, you know, that 
their old defense. It's his son and his mullet power. I have something I got to run by you. Okay. Or actually, I don't have to run it by you. It's just an observation I have to make. If you – like, if you're – you're the listener, right? So, you're going to assume you're, you're listening to the episode tomorrow or whatever. You need to pick up your phone, go look at the box score – of the game the Patriots are winning, all the games this season, and you would think you're looking at something out of the 1970s. I mean, like Cam Newton's stats, like you go look at it, it's like seven completions for 40 yards and they win. That's because they're just running the ball and playing defense and special teams. It's kind of like what you talk about with backups, just no mistake football. <laughs> right? I mean, go look at – do it with me right now. Let's go look at Cam's stats real quick. Okay. Cam Jordan's stats – Going Matthew right now, Jordan. Cam Jordan. I'm sorry, I've got I, I've got our defense on the mind. That's basically who could, Cam Jordan could be playing uh, quarterback for the Patriots right now. They'd be doing the Dude, same thing. That would be fun, but but they hate each other in real life. Okay. Those two Cams, they don't like each other. Here we go. Cam's passing stats: twelve for 19, 69 yards. Shout out to Gronk. One touchdown. One touchdown. And two rushing, rushing touchdowns. Goals. He did have two rushing touchdowns, which is – he's getting it done there. But if you just go do this for all the Patriots' wins, it's mind-blowing. It's like you're looking at a something from 1970. Like when people Insane. ran – when people didn't have shotgun. <laughs> like this is – Sega! Like before that, you know? Like, dude, that's insanity. Like Bill Belichick's just – Bill Belichick's a man. There's nothing else you can say about it. Nothing else you can do about it. It is what if it the is. The AFC playoff picture wasn't so heated and the Bills and Dolphins weren't so good. The Patriots that's could a, be right in there. They'd that's be a right good division there. this year, except for the Jets. That's a pretty tight division. Like, where, where are they? Where do they sit in the wild card hunt? In the wild card hunt right now, if we're they looking did. at the standings. Um, so they're technically not out of it. but the No, Patriots I mean, it's six and six back. Patriots, eight and four Dolphins, eight and three Bills. The, the Colts are eight and four. The Dolphins are eight and four, and the Browns are nine and three. That's your wild card teams. The AFC's loaded, dude. So you're, Wait, this is like Vegas, NFC type stuff in the AFC. Yeah, I mean Vegas. If they wouldn't have won today, they would be pretty much screwed. The Patriots, the Patriots aren't getting in. They're not good enough to get in. You say that now, dude. I mean, this is winter time. This is when Bill's like dark sorcery comes together. They're gonna make right. it interesting. I can tell you that. It'll be fun to watch for sure. But, yeah, this week 13 was uh, some of the best after, like, not afternoon, but, like, noon football games I've watched. The witching hour was insane. When the black hole games. Fired? I didn't even ask you. When does he get fired? Dude, I, I would have – he would have been gone tonight. Like, I, I, I'm guessing that you're going to go till next week um, at this point. So, if we're going in – next week, they're going to be facing – the give me one second while I'm scrolling. They're playing the Falcons. If they don't win that game, if they don't beat the Atlanta Falcons, he's gone. I'm calling it now. See, but if that's the case, why not just go ahead and get rid of him? Like, I think they're honestly, I think they're going to give him the full season. Why? <laughs> By the time people are listening to this, he's going to be gone. <laughs> I hope so. I hope that, like, I'm hoping right now that's happened. Hoping so. Fingers think, crossed. Do you think Tarod Taylor will be on his team wherever he goes next? I hope that he just becomes his assistant, his personal assistant. Like, he just goes and gets him food. He avoids doctors puncturing his lungs so that the Justin Herbert season can start. Like, just hope all of his wildest dreams come true. Just probably not going to happen in football. Go be a wide receiver or something. Like, you tried. You know, you tried your best. You know? <laughs> Remember Terrell Pryor? Shout out to Terrell Pryor. Remember that guy? Originally start hating on uh, Terod Taylor. Because Justin Herbert came to town and he needed to be the starter. Like, I've been talking about this kid for two years. Like, I've been so ready to watch him play. Like, what, Anthony we Lynn. what? Who, who do we have what for? <laughs> so what did we have personally wrong with? Like, what did he do to us? I forget there was something specific that happened now. Uh, for one, like, I was already, like, low-key, like, mad because, like, he's just – he's the guy that gets in when you bring in, like, the hot QB. Like, Hugh Jackson starts him over Baker Mayfield, one of the hottest college quarterbacks to come out, and you're like, why is this happening? 
it happened. Wasn't he on the um, – who else was he on, the Bills or no? Yeah, he was with the Bills for a while. He was with the Bills first, I think. I that think was he was like the he was the Bills guy. Like he was pretty cool with the Bills. I'm not gonna go like he he did some cool stuff with the Bills, but then yeah, he goes to the Browns. Now he's with the Chargers. Like give it a rest, oh, dude. Wow. I, how crazy is this? How old does this make you feel? I forgot about this. He was drafted by the Ravens. What? Yes. No way. Mm-hmm. Terod Taylor. What year? He's our age. So what year? Was he 2010? 2011? 2011, yeah. Wow, dude. Wow, we've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> like, we're getting he old, man. Drafted, he was drafted by Baltimore and was there for four years. Behind Joe. Much? He was just behind Joe Flacco. That's right. He was uh, behind Mr. Flacco, Mr. Elite Flacco. Elite! Every time I got the crate in Call of Duty, I thought of Joe Flacco. Every time. There was never I a time. I did not think we'd be looking at uh, Terod Taylor's career right now. We've been hating on him enough now. I, I really hope that we can get him on the show and I can just like, just like roast him and just until he exits out of the Zoom meeting. And then I'll just post and be like, he couldn't even stay like, to talk. He's probably like the best teammate. And we're, we're so mean. Yeah, we're just, we're mean boys. Sorry. Sorry, Terod. But Justin had to have his season. And now Anthony's ruining it. That's what – brain blast. I can't Jimmy wait. Neu- Jimmy Neutron thought. Listen. Hey. Go ahead. Anthony Lynn is doing this on purpose because he's mad that Terod Taylor can't be the starter because the whole fan base wants Justin Aber Herbert season. I believe it. I think I basically said the same thing on Twitter today. I'm with you. That's it. We figured out Blue's Clues. I'm going to tell you this right now. You're going to see all these hot take people on Twitter preseason next year, um, you know, coming out with these takes. Like, is, you know, is Justin Herbert really that good? Like, he has, like, one win or he has two wins. He's just a, a stat sheet stuffer. You're going to see some of those takes. All right, we're calling it out. I'm going to be the guy that's going to be like, is Colt McCoy for real? Like, that's going to be me. I'm going to be like, let's look at some stats. Like, has Colt McCoy ever been given a fair shot? Yeah. Was Colt McCoy ever on the cover of Madden, or did you confuse him with Peyton Hillis? That's the question. <laughs> uh, I want to have a hot take. It's going to say, um, we know for certainty that Colt McCoy would not have let the butt fumble happen. And Mark Sanchez got to get the playoffs. So why yes. not Colt McCoy? Exactly. Like, nobody remembers Mark Sanchez. Everybody remembers, except for Jets fans. Except for Jets fans. Um, but everybody remembers Colt McCoy. Dude, Colt McCoy is a legend for Texas football. He really is. He really is. He's Longhorn. Matthew McConaughey's guy. Yeah, for sure. Right. So it's real. It's real deal. Okay, never forget it. Um, do we have anything else to talk about? I think that that's that covers about everything. We got three uh, three games coming up this week. Uh, Monday Night Football doubleheader, which should be really fun. Looking at it right now, um, and then we're going to have like a makeup game on Tuesday. Uh, but we've got the Washington football team and the Steelers taking off tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central Time. We've got the Bills 49ers uh, 7.15 Central Time. And then Tuesday, we've got the Boys and the Ravens at 7.05. Uh, that's going to be some uh, – I think that my favorite game out of this one will probably be Bills 49ers. And uh, the rest – the other two will probably be snoozers. I'm gonna go ahead and say that now. I'm good with that. I uh, I've checked out most most of what you just said, but I have one final trivia question before we go. Let's go. I'm ready. I will give you a doll hair if you can tell me what team drafted Colt McCoy. The Cleveland Browns. Ding 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 ding. Winner winner winner. Shout out, because I was that guy that thought that Colt McCoy was Peyton Hillis. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Shout out to me. Um, all right. So, uh, so but they, but he's, yeah. he belongs in that long, um, you know, the long string of Browns QBs that just kept replacing each other, like, every six games. The just- Browns are a dumpster fire. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, the Colt McCoy. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I remember that. That was so great. We're gonna go with that narrative that the Browns ruined him, and he's been good the whole time. 
That's right. It's all been a secret just for this game today in another dimension to travel across space and time to this dimension. <laughs> um, that's what happened. All right. We're, we're leaving it at that. Uh, will we have any chef bets for these three games? I'm looking at it, but right now we're just holding, holding tight with the six and one record. Check Twitter, check Twitter, check TikTok, check us everywhere. Follow me at Garage Guy Chase. Chef Boy is at Chef Boy Ardeen. That's C H E F B O I R D E E N. And then follow us as a collective at Garage Guys FS to get all the latest content that we're pumping out. Be sure to hit like and subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, rate, review, and subscribe. Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Spotify. You know the drills. Tell your moms, your dads, your uncles, your sister, your aunties, uh, Colt McCoy's cousins. Tell them we won't call it on the show. All right, that's a wrap. Uh, we have a new catchphrase now, by the way. I changed it, and I, this is uh, something I waited to tell you here on the end of the show. Are you ready? I already know what it is. That's great. Sports, <laughs> profit, repeat. It's the garage, guys. 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 It's the garage 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 guys. It's it's it's. It's the garage guys. It's it's the garage guys.